Howdy once again, it's Tubal Kane, and this is Machine Shop Tips number 287 entitled Mounting the Palmgren Milling Attachment to the Logan Lathe. Now in the previous video I showed you how to mount the Atlas Milling Attachment onto the Atlas Lathe. So there'll be a lot of similarities but this one is based strictly on the Logan Lathe and the ubiquitous Palmgren Milling Attachment that is universal and can be used on virtually any lathe whereas the Atlas and South Bend attachments will not fit on the Logan lathe and I don't believe that Logan made their own milling attachment, at least I'm not aware of it. And the uh, Palmgren, uh, is, I believe this is the model 250, they make a bigger model too, but this is based on their popular two and a half inch wide uh, drill press vise of which they made probably tens of thousands and essentially as far as I'm concerned, this is parts bin engineering where they just modified vices that they already had with uh, some machining and then the rest of the attachment. And this isn't nearly as desirable or as uh, uh, universal as the other brands, but it's still a nice little attachment. And I have owned other models of this, uh, which unfortunately I sold, but that had. Uh, Acme thread here. So they produce this with an Acme thread. This is a V-thread. Also I had one that had a crank up here but that might have been put on by the owner and some of them had a hex here rather than a round so that you could use an adjustable wrench for that extra grip as you tightened your work. Be sure and observe all the safety rules in the machine shop and wear your glasses at all time and if you're working on any moving parts or making adjustments, unplug your lathe. The first thing I like to do is to swing the compound around at 90 degrees to what it is now and on the Logan there's two nuts right here. So turn that to 90 and unfortunately those index marks are on the far side. Uh, one's underneath here and one's on the far side so you have to crane your neck to do it. I put a temporary witness mark there but these two can then be tightened and like that. And the beauty of this is that uh, using the palm grin attachment you can lock the carriage and do much of your feeding in this direction with uh, the compound and you really can't do that with the uh, on the Atlas lay, so that's really a nice feature. Now remove the tool holder and uh, the rocker and this is going to be mounted right onto the the compound. Take the uh, the ring here and turn it upside down so the flat side is facing up and as you can see the way this is constructed that yoke, I'm going to call this a yoke, goes right see how this is there's a step there, so be careful you don't clamp it on that step. But simply put it on like this with that step up against the compound, or as close to it as you can get it. Now you need uh, a piece of steel. This is 3 8 square mild steel. Don't use a tool bit, but that should, uh, should serve you well. Kind of back that out a little, like that. center it and you don't want this washer up against the nut just give yourself just a little gap there but yet we don't want this to hang over any more than necessary because we, we need rigidity and uh, heaven knows that these vices and our attachments rather uh, lack rigidity and then for now I'm just going to snug this up just a little bit because I'm going to make an adjustment here as we attempt to square up the face of the vise with the spindle of the lathe and uh, let me show you several ways to do that. Using a bounty towel and then your fingers make sure that it is absolutely clean in here and uh, there are no chips. That being done in order to square it up I suppose that you could just use the, the tops of the jaws, but sometimes those are chewed up or damaged. I, I prefer to take a parallel, and this is one and three quarters, about a half inch thick. Put it into the vise, and you can see that hangs out a little bit even after I tighten it up. So I'm pushing it into the vise and just snugging it up. Now I can bring 
the parallel up against the faceplate. And I put a faceplate on there for this very reason. You probably can use the chuck, but the jaws may be in the way, or you may have to back out the chuck, the chuck jaws, or even remove them. And that's actually more work than putting a dog plate on. So with the uh, nut here, the bolt loosened just a little bit, I'm going to advance this up to the, uh, the plate and wiggle it until it is perfectly uh, in contact from one end to the other. And then I can tighten it up. Now if, if in doubt you can uh, check that with a feeler gauge like I showed you in the other video or you can take two little strips of paper this always works pretty well and put one here and then one on the other side as such and see if they're both tight and they are so that shows that the device, uh, the bottom of the vise, where we probably are going to put the work, is perfectly parallel with the uh, face plate, dog plate, or perpendicular to the spindle and the axis of the machine. Now another way to zero this in is with an indicator, but in this case I'm just proving what I did uh, a moments ago. And uh, notice that the indicator is just put onto the, uh, the ways there. I don't really like to hold it right on the ways, but I don't think it'll hurt anything. And the indicator point, I'm moving the compound now, not the carriage, is on zero. Now watch the pointer, the needle, as I move it. I'm just going to move it the two and a half inches because that's uh, the length of the vise, but it's... Uh, pretty much dead on. And of course there's always some slop here. And there's nothing you can do about that so don't worry about it. A reminder when you're milling on the lathe that vertically here we call it the y-axis and longitudinally is the z-axis and then the cross feed is the X axis. From time to time you want to be milling uh, at different angles or certainly with the, uh, the work position the other way so we can uh, also loosen this up. I gotta tighten this up again and swing this by 90 degrees. So I'm going to do that and then show you how to indicate that or I should say to, to square it up. Now to turn the attachment at uh, 90 degrees, I have installed in the vise my Sunday Best Sterrett Square that I very seldom use for uh, any purposes, uh, uh, preserve it for special purposes like this I should say. And that's again up against the back of the vise and I'm going to turn the entire unit and put this up against the faceplate. But here's the problem I ran into. When I turn this at 90 degrees as such and I'll just snug it for the moment. It really won't work on this machine because there's a bit of a, a radius here on the top of the compound and the bottom of the milling attachment actually is hitting the compound. You see how I can't get a feeler gauge under there? So that would have to be uh, milled off a little bit under there but I really don't want to do that so we'll look at uh, an alternative for that. Now you can see what I've done here to overcome that little problem and again that's just this little hump right here that is offending me and uh, keeping me from doing what I just wanted to do. But I've moved the compound back into the zero position if you want to call that and the thing I do not like about that is twofold. First of all, I have lost the ability to do any feeding with this in the Z axis. So I will have to do the feeding with the carriage hand wheel, but that's how we had to do it on the Atlas. The other thing is that I always told the kids at school, and I was told that we normally don't like these two cranks 
in the same position because they interfere with each other. So that, that's something I don't like, but I'm going to have to live with it. Now, with the uh, square in there, and this just slightly loose, I can bring that up against the faceplate. And I got just a little wiggle room now to uh, square it up. And with the other hand, I'm going to feed the carriage hand wheel until I get it just right. Now this can be tightened up good and firm. And double check either with a paper or a very thin um, feeler gauge. Then and do not use a carpenter square or a cheap square or you're, you're losing all your accuracy. We also could indicate this part of the square, but I'm not going to do that. And in the other video, I showed you that uh, I put the parallel back in. Let me take this out. Put the parallel back in the vise and I had an indicator back on the, on the back side and I, I indicated to make sure that it was right on. So there's uh, different ways of doing that. And for some simple milling jobs, I'm probably telling you more than you need to know. And uh, you, you determine how accurately you need to work for a given job. But pro possibly you don't need to indicate it, just what I showed you here is sufficient. From time to time you may wish to mill at an angle and using uh, taper gauges such as this, or a homemade one like I showed you in other videos, and this, for instance, is a 30 degree with the parallel still in place and held up against just with your hand and almost takes an extra hand to do this. That can be brought up against your uh, uh, dog plate and uh, turn this until you get it just where you want it. Just like that and then you can tighten it. You could also use oh, even something as simple as a triangle from drafting if you don't need to be too accurate. Another alternative for those angles is that if you have this set for uh, 0 or 90 on your compound you could just move that out and reading your, your compound here on, on the, the protractor on the compound, set that for whatever angle you want. And that probably is close enough for uh, general purposes. From this view, I think you can understand that there's a great lack of rigidity in uh, this type of milling attachment. Because look at the hangover that we have here from uh, the, the nearest really firm stationary point, it's about five inches out here, and if, depending on how much your work extends from the vise, you could be six inches away, and there's just an awful lot of uh, wiggle room there, a possibility for vibration and chatter. So these milling, atta milling attachments are not a total substitute for a Bridgeport mill, but may get you away with light cuts for uh, in a pinch. And uh, I would never trade this for a real milling machine. Now, I just showed you how to set this for angles. You can set it really for compound angles. I've set this back to zero, but let's just say that it was still set at 30 degrees. We could also use our protractor here, and there's a zero line right here, index line, and using a three-quarter wrench. Oh, that's tight. That's probably tight from the factory. Just back it off a little bit. And it can be set with the protractor here to whatever angle you want. And then tightened again. So couple that along with the possibility of, uh, of the other angle I told you. You can mill a compound angle or drill it. Whatever your drawing or your project um, calls for. And remember that in the y axis now, that's vertically, 
this is how we feed it and there is a gib here these are dovetails it's a gib there and this is the gib lock the original one when I went to use it it was bent it was a thumb screw so I need to replace that I just have a round head in there for for the moment but you would lock that if you're feeding in the other directions and then unlock it when you're going to feed in the Y axis with this knurl knob then you could quickly bring this back to uh, zero and it may be necessary to indicate that back in because remember that the graduations are only a starting point depends on how carefully they manufactured it or how closely you can read it even with a magnifying glass and a flashlight you may not truly be on zero you just think you are so that can be indicated and in this case we'd mount an indicator here and run it across the top here where my thumb is running and that would prove whether or not that it is uh, back at zero and I think I'll prove that to you here in the next clip just to prove my point, I went back with my magnifying glass and a flashlight and I got this on zero as closely as I could. And then uh, I put the chuck on and I used the uh, beloved last word indicator uh, in the three jaw chuck and that could also be held in a, a Jacob chuck. Uh, there's so many different ways of using uh, these indicators that's up to your imagination and ingenuity but uh, this is just a perfect place for a test indicator rather than a plunger type and I cannot face this toward you I can't rotate the chuck because it would, I would damage the stem but putting this on zero here and I'm running it on the parallel and I already did this off camera like this just for about a three inch run it is four thousandths off and I could easily adjust that now without even looking at the protractor and bring it back into zero but that's just to show you that you, you have to take the uh, uh, graduations here on the protractors with a grain of salt that they are just a starting point for you to get it into the ballpark park in order to use your indicators well this uh, concludes this video and I've shown you how to set this up different ways and indicate it. I hope this has helped and be sure and watch the next uh, couple videos where I'm going to do some key seats on the Logan lathe with this Palmgren vise. And to be honest with you, this is the inaugural run with this uh, uh, attachment rather, Palmgren attachment. Uh, I call it a vise because it is their vise on the attachment. And that is the Model 250. It's cast in right back here. So uh, give me a thumbs up if you like this. And uh, I guess a thumbs down if you don't like it. And uh, this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. And I'll see you in my next video.